Hey guys, all right, let's go ahead and talk about uh, infinite limits and how to find them algebraically. So, um, first of all, if we try direct substitution, uh, limit as x comes into 2 from the right of 1 over x minus 2, what happens with direct substitution? Well, the top is just 1, uh, and then on the bottom we have 2 minus 2, which is 0. So we end up with uh, 1 over 0, okay, which the, is really even worse than 0 over 0, so that makes us really sad. Because uh, now factoring isn't going to work because it's not 0 over 0. Uh, there's no absolute values here, so there's no tricks that we can do with that. Um, so what are we going to do here? Well, first of all, um, before we talk about how to do it algebraically, let's uh, remember how we did it graphically. Let's come back in here. Uh, this is the graph of this function here, uh, 1 over x minus 2. Okay, it's got a vertical asymptote here at x equals 2. There's a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis, but that doesn't matter for this. Um, so as x comes into 2 from the right, where is y going? Well, x comes into 2 from the right from the right, y is going all the way up to positive infinity, right? So we know from the graph that that's our answer. Uh, it's positive infinity. Okay, but how do we show that algebraically? So if you're dealing with a function that's not really as simple as this, or if uh, you, you, know, you just don't have access to a graphing calculator or whatever, um, if you just can't use the graph for some reason, then yeah, you'll have to know how to do this algebraically. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So we know it's positive infinity, but let's just say we don't for now, and we'll see how to get there algebraically. So the first thing that we'll want to do is uh, set up a table. So let's go ahead and do that, and in this table we're going to have uh, three rows. So first row is going to have x values. Uh, the second row <coughs> is going to have values of x minus 2, because that's what we have down here, x minus 2. And then the uh, third row is going to have values of 1 over x minus 2. All right, so the second row is not really necessary, but uh, it's helpful for this video, just so uh, it's easier to see what's happening here. So x is approaching 2 from the right, so that means x is always bigger than 2, and it's getting very, very, very close to 2. So let's go ahead and pick some values of x that are larger than 2, but uh, as we pick more values, let's make them closer and closer to 2. So let's go ahead and start with x equals 3. All right. So if x is 3, what's x minus 2? Well, it's 3 minus 2, which is 1. And what's 1 over that? Well, it's uh, 1. All right. Um, let's go ahead and pick 2.5 next. So if x is 2.5, what's x minus 2? Well, it's 2.5 minus 2, which is 0 0.5. And what's 1 divided by that? Uh, it's 2. All right. Uh, next value of x we'll pick. We'll pick a few more here, just so we can establish a pattern. Um, let's pick 2.1. All right, now if x is 2.1, what's x minus 2? Well, 2.1 minus 2 is 0 0.1, and 1 divided by 0 0.1 is 10. All right, how about 2.01? Well, 2.01 minus 2 is 0 0.01. And 1 divided by that is 100. Okay. Now how about 2.0001? So that's 2.3 zeros and a 1. Um, if we do that minus 2, we're going to get 0 0.3 zeros and a 1. All right. And then 1 divided by that is going to be 10,000. So we see uh, 1 over x minus 2, which is getting pretty big, right? As x gets closer to 2, this is getting pretty big. Let's go ahead and do one more value of x, and then we'll talk about what's happening. So let's do 2.0000001. So that's 2.6 zeros and a 1. So if we do that minus 2, that's going to be 0. Point six zeros and a one. And uh, one divided by that is going to be 10 million. Pretty big, right? So here, x is really close to two, and uh, one over x minus two is a pretty big number. And uh, we can see from this table here, there's a pattern emerging that when x gets closer and closer and closer to two, uh, one over x minus two is getting larger and larger and larger. Okay. 
So um, let's think about what's happening here. As x goes to 2, um, where does x minus 2 go? Oops. As x goes to 2, where does x minus 2 go? x minus 2 is approaching uh, 0, right? So you can think of this as subtracting 2 from both uh, sides of this arrow here. So x approaches 2, subtract 2 from both sides, you get x minus 2 approaches 0. So we're approaching 2 from the right, so from the right, from the right, okay? So as x approaches 2 from the right, x minus 2 approaches 0 from the right, all right? And we can see that here in this table also. As x is coming into 2 from the right, uh, the values of x minus 2 are getting closer and closer to 0, also from the right. All right? So this means that uh, x minus 2 is always positive. All right? So basically what's happening is x minus 2 is always positive and it's getting really teeny tiny. So what we have, uh, as x gets closer and closer to 2 from the right, what we're doing is we're taking 1 and dividing it by really teeny tiny positive numbers. Okay? And if you divide uh, a constant, uh, whatever it is, in this case it's just 1, if you divide that by really teeny tiny numbers that get smaller and smaller, then what you have, your result is a really huge number. Okay? Because uh, if you have a top and a bottom, and if the bottom is really, really teeny tiny compared to the top, then the quotient, the overall, the whole thing overall is just huge, right? As we can see here from this table. So that's pretty much what's going on here. Um, you have 1 divided by teeny tiny numbers that just get smaller and smaller and smaller, and as they get smaller on the bottom, the whole thing uh, gets larger and larger. So uh, this means that 1 over x minus 2 is going to approach positive infinity. And we know it's approaching positive infinity because uh, 1 is a positive number and x minus 2 is always positive uh, because we're approaching 2 from the right. So it's a positive number divided by really teeny tiny positive numbers and as these uh, teeny tiny positive numbers get smaller and smaller, closer to 0, this whole uh, quotient here just approaches positive infinity. Right? And we know that's what happens from the graph. We've already seen that. So uh, this kind of reasoning tells us that this limit equals positive infinity. So this is just kind of uh, an explanation of what's happening here when we do this kind of limit. So um, that's the limit from the right. Let's go ahead and talk about the limit from the left. So actually, uh, the limit from the left won't be anything new. So if you want to move on to the next video, go ahead and do that. Um, but just for the sake of being complete, I'll talk about the left-hand limit here also but there won't be anything new. It'll just be the same, pretty much the same discussion, but from the left now. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's not draw the graph again, but if we remember from the graph, um, well, let's just draw a sketch real quick. So x-axis, y-axis. Um, here is our vertical asymptote of x equals two, and then here, this piece, this piece. So here's our function 1 over x minus 2. Uh, as x comes into 2 from the left, the y values are going all the way down without stopping, right? So they're going to negative infinity. So let's also change this. That should be from the left now. Okay, so we know from the graph that this actually equals negative infinity. But uh, let's say we don't have the graph, we don't have access to it, we can't get it for whatever reason. Um, let's figure out how to get negative infinity algebraically. Right, and like I said, it's pretty much going to be the same um, as the discussion for the right-hand limit, but it's good to see it. So just like before, we'll set up a table um, with values of x and values of x minus 2 and values of uh, 1 over x minus 2. Okay, so this time x is coming into 2 from the left, which means uh, we're going to pick numbers or we're going to pick values of x that are smaller than 2, but they're going to get closer and closer to 2. So let's go ahead and pick 1 first. All right. So if x is 1, x minus 2 is uh, negative 1. All right. And then 1 over that is negative 1. So now let's go ahead and pick uh, 1.5. <coughs> All right. If x is 1.5, x minus 2 is uh, negative 0 0.5. Okay, 
and 1 divided by that is negative 2. Okay, uh, next, let's go ahead and pick 1.9. So if x is 1.9, then x minus 2 is negative 0.1. Right, and then 1 divided by that is negative 10. So we kind of see a similar pattern uh, start to emerge. Um, but let's go ahead and pick uh, 1.99. Right, and then 1.99 minus 2 is negative 0 0.01. Um, 1 divided by that is negative 100. Right, and then we'll pick a couple more values of x and see what happens. Uh, let's go ahead and pick 1.9999. Alright, so 1.49's here. Alright, um, this minus 2 equals negative 0 0.0001. So that's negative 0 0.3 zeros and a 1. Uh, 1 divided by that is negative 10,000. Alright, so we're kind of starting to see the same numbers down here we had before, but now they're negative instead. Um, that's just happening because of how I'm choosing the x values here, but really you can choose any x values you want um, as long as you're choosing them so that they're less than 2 and they get closer and closer to 2 as you pick more and more. Uh, because that's the idea pretty much. So let's go ahead and pick one more here. Um, how about 1.79s uh, now? Nine, 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 nine. So that's one decimal point uh, and then seven nines. So that minus two is going to be negative zero point zero 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 one. So negative zero point six zeros and then a one. So one divided by this guy here is uh, negative ten million. All right, so we're starting to see uh, a same, the same kind of pattern as before. Um, as x gets closer and closer to 2 from the left, now our values of 1 over x minus 2, they're shooting off to negative infinity is what it kind of looks like, right? They're getting uh, farther and farther away from 0 in the negative direction. Right? So they're getting really large, so to speak, but they're really large negative numbers, meaning they're really far away from 0. Okay. So, um, let's see what's happening here. As x approaches 2, where does x minus 2 go? Well, just like before, it goes to 0, right? Um, but now we're coming in from the left. So x is going to 2 from the left, so x minus 2 goes to 0 from the left. And again, we can see that from the table here, right? Um, if x is 1, x minus 2 is negative 1. If x is 1.5, x minus 2 is negative 0.5. So as, and so on and so on, if x gets closer and closer to 2 from the left, then x minus 2 is getting closer and closer to 0 from the left. Alright, so um, because x minus 2 is approaching 0 from the left, that means x minus 2 is always negative. Alright, so if we look at uh, 1 over x minus 2, then what we have is positive number 1 divided by something that's always negative. Okay, so in other words, it's positive divided by negative. So whatever this is, it's always going to be negative. And as we can see from the table, um, it's getting more and more negative. As in, it's just, uh, it's staying negative and it's going farther away from zero. So it's just shooting off to negative infinity and it's not stopping. So this is going all the way down to negative infinity here. Um, because just like before, what's happening is we're taking one and we're dividing it by really, really teeny tiny negative numbers. And what we mean by teeny tiny negative number is uh, a negative number that's really, really super close to zero. Okay, like this. Like this here, this is a really teeny tiny negative number. Um, and when we take one and divide it by that, then we get a really large negative number. Okay. So teeny tiny negative number close to zero, really large negative number far away from zero. So that's pretty much the same thing uh, that was happening before with the uh, right-hand limit but now things are negative because we have a left-hand limit. But it's pretty much the same idea. So this kind of analysis here tells us that this limit uh, equals negative infinity. Which again, we also know from the graph, but this is how you would go about uh, analyzing this kind of thing algebraically in case you don't have access to the graph.